Hi everyone, I wanted to do an experimental video on trying to analyze a poem that you're reading for week six using the TPCAST worksheet that I've placed on Blackboard for you to use to analyze poetry. And I'm, I'm not prepared for this, I'm just going to do it off the cuff so that you can kind of see how I'm working my way through the poem using that worksheet and how I would encourage you to start trying to analyze the poems for a little deeper meaning. So the TPCAST stands for Title, Paraphrase, Connotation, Attitude, Shifts, Title, and Theme. So I'm going to briefly walk through some of these. And the first thing that this, this worksheet asks us to do is look at the title and try to understand what it might imply before we even read the poem. So I've chosen to take a closer look at My Mother by Ellen Bryant Voigt, who uh, wrote this poem in 2011, so it's a more modern piece. And if I start to think about the poem without the context of the body of it, when I think about the word my, I think about personal pronoun my. It's my mother, I possess her, I own her. That shows a relationship, a personal relationship. And then when I look at the word mother, I note that mother is a more formal title for mom or mommy. So there's a formality to it. Maybe that includes or implies that the narrator and his or her mother have a distant, more formal relationship, or maybe it just in, implies that there's they're grown, that the child has grown. Um, poems like this with titles like this usually go one of two ways, meaning that it is an ode to the mother and all her wonderful qualities, or it could be a criticism of the mother. Rarely have I experienced poems that are kind of in the middle. So I'm going to first read the poem aloud. As I, as I do this, you'll notice that the poem lacks a lot of punctuation. I don't know that it has any punctuation, so I want to know why that's happening. And that can impede our ability to read it and then hear it and understand it. So I'm going to try to read it in a way that flows sentence-wise, so it makes a little bit more sense to me. So. My mother, my mother, my mother, she could do anything. She did everything. The world was an unplowed field, a dress to be hemmed, a scraped knee. It needed a casserole. It needed another alto in the choir. Her motto was apply yourself. The secret of life was spreading your gifts. Why hide your light under a bushel? You might forget it there in the dark times, the lonely times, the sun gone down on her resolve. She slept a little first, so she'd be fresh. She put on a little lipstick, drawing on her smile. She pulled that hair up off her face. She pulled her stockings on. She stepped into her pumps. She took up her matching purse, already packed with everything. They would all learn. They would be nice. They would apologize. They would be grateful. Whenever they had forgotten what to pack, she never did. She had a spare. She kissed her cheek. She wiped the mark away with her own spit. She marched you out again unless you were that awful sort of stubborn, broody child who more and more I was, who once had been so sweet, so mild, staying put where she put me. What happened? Must have been the bushel I was hiding in. The sun gone down on her resolve. She slept a little first, so she'd be fresh. She'd pulled her stockings on. She'd packed the words for every lack. She had a little lipstick on her teeth. The mark on my cheek would not rub off. She gave the fluids from her mouth to it. She gave the tissues from her ample purse to it. I never did apologize. I let my sister succor those in need and suffer the little children. My mother knew we are self-counseling. She gave herself a lifetime C, an average grade from then on out. She kept the lights on day and night. A garden needs the light. The sun could not be counted on. She slept a little, day and night. She didn't need her stockings or her purse. She watered, she weeded, she fertilized. She stood in front of the tallest stalk, heaving the deer, the birds, all the world's idle, shameless thieves away. So a little bit longer piece, five stanzas we're looking at. And I'm not going to paraphrase it, which is the next step in the TP cast worksheet just to save some time on this video, but I'm going to summarize it. So when I look at stanza one, I think it's an acknowledgement that my mother, it, there's an admiration there. She could do anything. She did everything. She was the helping hand when you needed it. She went out of her way to provide for other people, and she encouraged us to do that. So her phrase, why hide your light under a bushel, means give your gifts to other people. Um, when we get to stanza two, she is now implying that um, if we don't give ourselves away and our gifts away, we might forget them. And when things get hard, as they inevitably do, um, it might be hard for us to get along. 
This stanza also indicates to us that mom fulfilled a certain standard of femininity. She wore lipstick, she put her hair up, she wore stockings, she had a matching purse, so she appeared put together. And at the end of the stanza, it begins with, they would all learn, they would be nice, they would, to the next one, apologize. So I think here that they means her kids. Um, she's teaching them to be nice, to apologize, to be grateful. She's doing it by her acts and probably by her words. Uh, stanza three talks about how she always had what you needed in her purse. She had tissues, she would help you. She would um, fix your boo-boos and clean you up with her spit. And unless, let me get to this line, unless you were that awful sort of stubborn, broody child who more and more I was. So here we, we have the first personal pronoun, I, indicating the narrator of the poem, talking about him or herself being a stubborn, broody child um, who had once been so sweet, so mild, staying put where she put me. So used to be good, used to behave, wasn't so much anymore. What happened? the narrator is asking him or herself, must have been the bushel I was hiding in. So this feels irreverent. It feels kind of mocking. Um, the sun gone down on her reserve. She slept a little at first. So sun gone down on her reserve. Um, she is doing the same routines. She's doing the lipstick, the stockings, the purse, but it's not as effective. So maybe the kids are getting older. Maybe she's not trying as hard. Maybe it's both. We have this, again, an I, I never did apologize. We don't know what the apology was for. And then I let my sister succor those in need and suffer the little children, uh, meaning I, I let the responsibility of taking care of the other siblings, I left that to my other siblings. I didn't want to be involved in it. My mother knew we were self-counseling. I'm not sure what that means. I want to come back to that. She gave herself a lifetime C in average grade. So by the end of this stanza, by the end of this poem, Mom has given herself a C. It's not the narrator giving mom a C. It's mom giving herself a C. So a C, again, is average, but it's not extraordinary and it's not failing. So it almost implies that mom kind of gave up. And then the kids presumably are all gone. She doesn't need her purse and her stockings anymore. She's turned her attention to keeping and tending her yard, so keeping the thieves of deer and, and birds out. And it makes me wonder if she's equating the deer and the birds to her kids. So that's me kind of trying to summarize those five stanzas. Um, paraphrase means you're going through line by line and trying to translate it in your own words. And I encourage you to do that, especially if you have poems that you're having trouble with. But again, for brevity's sake, I just summarized it. So if I move on to connotation, this asks me to look for things like figurative language, the um, repetition of rhyme and, and alliteration and assonance. So as I go through here, I notice that we don't have a rhymed pattern. Uh, the lines are not any specific set of syllables, although it seems like lines three and four tend to get longer in each of the stanzas. Again, I have no punctuation, which could tell me that this is kind of a stream of consciousness. This is this is how a brain works. This is how the, the poet or the narrator is thinking through recollections of his or her mother. We do have a few metaphors. The world was an unplowed field, meaning it's ripe for cultivating. There's potential there. Um, we have the shameless thieves of the deer and the birds who shameless means they don't they don't care they're not sorry for it and thieves means they're taking something without asking so again does that equate to the children so we have a few metaphors and we also have i noticed as i was reading it aloud a lot of repetition of s's and she did she did she put she gave she 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 so the focus is very much on mother and we have a few of those personal pronouns i and so if I were to analyze this, I would maybe try to start to differentiate where the personal pronoun I differs from the personal pronoun she or the third person pronoun she and how that those two interact with each other in the poem. Um, so that's connotation. The attitude is 
also related to tone, so the author's intended or unintended attitude towards the, the topic. It feels to me like the author's tone is a little bit embarrassed, a little bit frustrated, also a little bit guilty. Um, I think that there is some admiration here for the f facade that maybe mom put on in order to make it look like everything was going well, how she was there, she did volunteer, she did do things, she looked a certain way, she was presentable. And then as things start to kind of fall apart, there is a sense of sadness, and there's also this sense of guilt. I never did apologize. Um, I was the stubborn, broody child. Uh, what happened to me. And so I think there's a complex relationship, as there often is with parental figures, and I think that shift starts to happen early on. Um, we see that mom's doing all these things. There's an indication here, her drawing on her smile, pulling up that hair off her face, that it is a facade, that she's acting, she's going through the motions, she has to look this way because that's what's expected. Uh, if you draw on a smile, you're not smiling naturally. It doesn't come because you're you're loving what you're doing. And then here we get to, she has lipstick on her teeth. Um, her ability to rub off the mark is not working anymore. So that could either mean kids are getting older and it's not working, or she's not trying as hard, or the, the relationship between her kids and her is just, it's, it's getting more difficult. Um, the title, if I look at it again on a more interpretive level, I think about how people say mother and father when they're talking to other people about their parents, like, ugh, my mother, or my mother is a is an awesome human being. So I can hear it almost being said in a critical way, venting to somebody else about, my mom was this way, and now all she does is sleep and take care of her yard, keeping all the deer and the birds out. Um, the theme, what does this say about the human experience? I think it says a lot about parenting and a lot about the complex relationship between parents and kids and how it's a lot of work and oftentimes kids don't fully acknowledge that work or understand that work and how it can eat away at the person giving the love and energy and attention. And um, I think that this Shameless Thieves last part of the last stanza is telling, um, and I think that the self-canceling is something I would dig into further. My mother knew we are self-canceling. Um, what does that mean? Does that mean that by having kids, you cancel yourself out? And so if we keep having kids, we just we, we become the children and not ourselves. I think there's some sense of loss of personality or what is important to you that comes through in this poem. So that's me verbally talking through the My Mother poem using the TP cast worksheet that I'll have on Blackboard. I hope that helps. Um, again, sometimes poems are pretty straightforward, easy to understand, but a lot of times they're a lot more complex than one reading will give you. So start to use the tools at your availability to dive into a deeper meaning of these things and remember that all of you can have different interpretations of the poems that we're reading. So if you have questions or comments, as usual, let me know. Thanks.